Now, this is just one of the prices and consequences. There are plenty. Also, you know, it's individual dependent, but this is crucial. You understand this because the one we're talking about today is it like a direct attack. It's going to be one of the most direct consequences. If you stay in this habit, it will creep up on you and it will significantly impact your marital life, your romantic life, your dating life, relationships with women. So this is important. Uh, I reckon you watch this fully. The story we're going to dive into, it's pretty sad. So let's let's just get right into it, you know, guys. Get your get your napkin boxes, get your uh, tissues on hand to wipe your tears as we go along with this. This is pretty sad. The price of PMO addiction. <clears throat> I'm 47. I've been sexually active for 26 years, and I've only ever owed through penetration once. I've been married and divorced twice with our lack of physical intimacy being at the center of our issues. It's, it's nothing. It's sad, you know, lack of physical intimacy. I was like most teens. I imagine a serial fapper, but in those days, the internet wasn't a thing. I've read some of your stories and recognize uh, that this addiction has caused me to have developed PIED. For any of you guys who don't know, that means porn-induced erectile dysfunction. Uh, that manifests as being unable to get or sustain um, with my partners. Sustain a an, an good quality wood <laughs> with my partners. As an adult, I have had uh, DE delayed, you know, and when I've been at my uh, and when I've been at my most anxious, I haven't even been able to owe uh, the. Oh, despite my best efforts. So once again, this guy is 47. Okay. He's been dating around for up to 26 years, total, his total long, the long dating life. And he's only owed once, like through normal lovemaking. He's only owed once. So I'm assuming most of the other O's is probably just done by himself after being intimate. So he has extreme difficulty connecting. And, and look, the first time that happens, you know, your 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 partner will be like, oh, whatever. But like every time having to get yourself off and she she won't isn't able to do that for you, it starts to get in their head and they get concerned and there's going to be issues. So he goes on to say that he viewed uh, PMO as a solution to his psychological problem, right? So it's like, oh, I can't. Oh, let me use this. To, oh, it's a very actually normal. It's 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 kind of like think of it this way, you know, like you, you're jacked up on a, a drug for a while you get off of it, you're feeling horrible side, side effects. So then you get back on it or you up the dose to like, because you think that will help you. <laughs> but it does the opposite. It only keeps hurting you. He tried to use PMO to fix this problem. He said, I was able to get and sustain an interaction with ease. Okay. In my last marriage, we tried integrating PMO into the occasions we would make love. I also used uh, drugs like Viagra, to make up for my failure as a husband. It's not that I didn't fancy my ex. I just couldn't overcome what I saw as a Game of Thrones style impenetrable wall. So it looks like he just had this blockade, right? And part of that blockade is psychological in your head, and part of it is neurochemical. So it's not like he was just this anxious person who's messed up. He just has this history of, you know, conditioning his brain to abuse, right? Condition his brain to get off a certain way. So he said he sought help to my GP, specialists, hypnotists, counselors, therapists, uh, then relationship counselors, and eventually, and sadly, lawyers. Uh, I saw the news of Jeffrey Tubin of uh, being suspended and fired for exposing himself during a work video conference. So Jeffrey Tubin, he was like some American lawyer, um, high-level lawyer, and in a Zoom call, he thought he was not broadcasting. He thought his mic was muted, and he was basically getting it on. And <laughs> And he had to do a bunch of public apologies. So he that's what he's mentioning here. And he says, I realized that I had checked a uh, porn site to browse that same day because I was bored. Unlike Jeffrey, I have become so desensitized by it. I could be flicking through CNN for all the arousal I would feel. I'm not sure what that means. I think he's just saying that he was just so desensitized. And even seeing that article, he didn't care. He just kept going on. 
So he said he tried to stop fapping in the past. He blamed the death grip for the reason why he could not O when making love. I had I had an identified um, porn addiction as a source of my performance anxiety. So I guess for a while he thought it was just fapping, that it was not prawn. I hadn't identified that it was prawn as the source of my performance anxiety and my body confidence issues. I recognize reading through some of your stories that the community have collectively been there. I've tried to go, I tried to go at it alone in the past and it just hasn't worked. I've been a great uncle, but never a dad. I've been plagued by my, by an undiagnosed issue. Still to this day, no professional has asked me the right, has asked the right questions to help them and uh and help them and me realize what was behind the symptoms so can you believe that guys he went to specialists hypnotists counselors sex therapists relationship counselors and he said that they never asked him the right questions how like these are these are people who are considered top top dollar experts that can help you and this was never brought up can you believe that can you believe that it's crazy that's crazy. It's sad. And this is not a rarity. I've worked with guys who've, who said the same thing and that therapy never even touched upon this type of stuff. Um, so it never, they never really helped them realize what was behind the symptoms. I have a long way to go. I'm in a new relationship. It's so hem- helpful to know I don't have to do it alone. Damn. Shout out to this guy for sharing, for sharing that story. Yo. It's very, um, it's sad, you know, but at the same time, I think there is a good positive and note here that he at least knows that uh, he's getting some leverage over himself. He knows that what the culprit is now, um, as painful as that is, you know, going through a, a, a divorce, especially when you're with a like a high quality partner, but then they, they are just not un- they're unhappy with your performance. That one really hurts. It's one thing to be in a it's one thing to be in like a, a relationship where you know you're not happy with them but it's a pretty low it, oh, the fuck i feel bad for him you know y'all need to understand that you you have to choose what like your sacrifices and what your regret is because you can either regret missing out on all the insane videos that are out there that you could be blissfully lying in bed with your bodily fluids all over you and just cracked out on a high like yeah there there is that great feeling but would you rather regret missing out on all those videos or the regret of just potentially destroying a marriage that could have made you very happy or just on a very simple level guys 26 years he's been uh, sexually active and he's only owed once through lovemaking only once and that's not like, oh, I just had a one night stand and I was anxious. We're talking about life partners here, not a- being able to, to, to push through it. And it's like, I'm sure he probably went to doctors. That's usually the first thing. When you have ED, they go to doctors, they check your blood levels, they make sure that you don't have like heart problems because that, that can be in a concern. But if you're, if you're 47, I mean, guys in that age, you know, testosterone, this is that. But it's like he said he went to specialists. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, but that's the reality. This is this is just a reality. Oh, we have to be aware the price of this habit. It's deadly. People don't understand. And and guess what? Like, unfortunately, these pack of cigarettes that are porn do not come with any warning labels, which is why it's like just big reason why we do what we do. There are warning labels that need to be on these products and these video hosting sites that just aren't there. You know, and unfortunately, it, it, there's going to be more and more of these dudes, unfortunately, who are going to go through this <laughs> habit for years and years and years. And they're they are going to be the same people with black lungs who are like, damn, ch- I wish there was a freaking label on this product before I got hooked on it. Right. You know, that's the sad reality of the, the, the consequences of this industry. This is these are the people who end up getting really hurt. And then you have people who are empowered from it, making money off your marital torture. 